Every time we cross the street, get on a bicycle, or drive a car, we face the potential of risks. Over time, however, we have developed strategies, ways to reduce the chances of our getting hurt by risks. If we are on a bicycle, maybe we wear a helmet. If we're crossing a street, we're going to stop, look, and listen for any other types of oncoming traffic. Or if we're in a car, we're going to wear seat belts. So we've developed skills and strategies for reducing the harm that can happen if we are affected by a certain type of a hazard. In making, testing, and distributing pharmaceutical products, there are risks as well. What national authorities and inspectors want to see, however, is do we understand what those risks are and have we put controls in place to prevent those risks from being expressed? In this video on quality risk management, we're going to talk about what quality risk management is. We're going to talk about how it can be used to produce products that are safe, pure, and effective. In the next video, we're going to look at some more specific tools that you can use to assess and evaluate risks. Quality risk management in the pharmaceutical industry has been defined by a group called the ICH, International Conference on Harmonization. They have created a guideline known as Q9 Quality Risk Management that is used by regulatory authorities and industry in Europe, in Asia, and in North America, and South America as well. Quality risk management, as defined by the ICH, is a systematic process for the assessment, control, communication, and review of risks to the quality of the drug or medicinal product across the product life cycle. There are two important parts of that definition. One is it focuses on the quality of the pharmaceutical product. The second is that it affects the, uh, or it looks at the risk across the product life cycle, not just in manufacturing, but in all aspects of developing the drug, the technology transfer, and the manufacturing of that product. Quality risk management has two parts. The first is risk assessment, and the second is risk management. In risk assessment, you're trying to find answers to five different questions. First, what can go wrong? Second, how bad can it get? Third, how could it happen? Fourth, how likely is it to happen? And fifth, do we need to reduce this risk? Once those questions are answered, you can then move into quality risk management, which is what can be done to control, mitigate, or prepare for this unwanted event? What are the best options given the circumstances? And third, what other risks or issues might that selected option create? Quality risk management also includes risk communication. What are you going to be talking to the stakeholders about? Are you letting them know about the potential risks and what you are doing to control or mitigate them? Quality risk management also includes risk review and risk monitoring. Risk monitoring is understanding what changes might have occurred and how are you going to use those changes in reevaluating the risk assessment that you have done. Quality risk management also includes documentation. How are you going to document what you have done on a table, in a report, or in a narrative form that you can then share with others, including regulatory authorities? Now that we have the big picture about quality risk management, Let's look at quality risk management in a little bit more detail, going through phase by phase. Before you begin a risk assessment, you want to have a group of qualified experts participating with you on a team. Using that team and experts involved in the process or in that device, you'll then create a high-level flow diagram. In that flow diagram, what you are looking for are the different components of that process, how the pieces fit together, what happens, and then who is involved. You also will need to have a clear understanding of the goal of the risk assessment. What are you trying to do in accomplishing it? For example, a goal could be identify potential risks in local vaccine distribution system. With the goal, you then have the risk question. The risk question is really what you are going to be focusing on as you do that risk assessment. For example, what are the risks of distributing the DTP vaccine in this particular region? Before you start the risk assessment, you need to have a team of knowledgeable people from different disciplines, a goal for doing the risk assessment, 
the specific risk question that will be answered, and then information about the process, material, or device. The first question that you ask will involve looking for the hazard. You're asking what can go wrong. When you ask that question, you're trying to find the hazard, and a hazard is defined as the source of harm. It is the source of that unwanted event or that failure mode. Once you know what that hazard is, then you can ask the second question, which is, what is the impact? How bad could it get? You could be interested in the local impact that would occur, or what is sometimes called the knock-on or next-level impacts. Or you could be looking at the final impact, which would be, what could it mean if the patient would use this particular product? The third and fourth questions involve thinking about the causes. What caused that unwanted event? What caused that failure? And those two questions are, how could it happen? And also, how likely is it to happen? For example, how could the vaccine be exposed to freezing temperatures? How could a shipment of pharmaceutical products be mishandled? This is where knowledge of the system, the process, or the product is very important. You are now ready to estimate how likely it is that the harm might occur, and if it does, how bad it would be. Sometimes you might use words like low, medium, or high. Other times you might use a numerical scale, 1 to 3, 1 to 5, or 1 to 10. If you use numbers, the lower the number, for example 1, the less likely or the less harm would be expected. With these two pieces of information, likelihood and impact, you can now calculate the risk. Risk is defined as the combination of likelihood and impact. You can multiply the two numbers together and get a risk score, or you could use a risk matrix and plot the two ratings that you've determined. The last step of risk assessment is risk evaluation, where you're making a decision about what you should do about the particular risks that you've identified. Do you reduce the risk or accept it as is? The criteria may be established by your organization or by other experts in risk management. Often at this point, you'll now have a list of those risks that are acceptable as is, those risks that must be controlled, and those risks that, if you can control them, you should be able to do that. Risk management looks at ways to treat the risk through control, mitigation, and preparation. The first step here is to determine how to treat the risks. For those risks that must be or should be reduced, you have three options to consider. If you can prevent the unwanted event from happening, that would be your first choice. We refer to this as control. For example, one way to prevent the freezing of vaccines is not to expose the vaccine to zero degrees C. This might mean not shipping the vaccine during cold winter conditions or not exposing the product to a block of cold blue ice that might cause it to freeze during shipment. To successfully prevent the unwanted event, you need to know something about the failure mechanism. What is causing that to fail? If you don't know the failure mechanism, any type of control that you can put in place would be a waste of time and a waste of money. There's a second option that's available to you, and that is mitigation or protection. Mitigation is different from control because with mitigation, you are assuming that that unwanted event is going to occur. And what you are trying to do is to lower the impact of that unwanted event on that thing of value. The third option that is available to you is preparation. This can include planning and practice. Planning would be creating a contingency plan, and preparation uh, would also involve practice, trying that plan out, seeing how it works to make sure that the plan is adequate and also that you are ready to implement that if you need to. Practicing would be doing a simulation of event, using the plan that was developed. This can be as simple as doing a talk-through in a conference room with different responsible people present, or as complicated as doing an actual drill. As you're looking for risk treatment options, what you would really try to do is to have different layers of protection, include some control mechanisms if possible, mitigation, and also preparation. Another thing to think about as you're looking at your risk mitigation plan is that some options are going to be better than others. 
Some might be more costly up front, but then over time would be easier to sustain, and they'll then be more economical. Other options have lower cost up front, but then have longer, higher costs over time. Another thing to think about as you're looking at the plan is what options might lock you out of future options. They put you down a path, and once you're on that path, there's nothing else that you can do. Before you select and finalize a risk treatment plan, what you want to do is to perform another risk assessment to assure that there are no other risks that you're injecting into the system that could cause future problems. Documenting and communicating the work of your team is important to let others know what you have done. You're going to want to communicate with potential stakeholders who might be affected by the risk. Also, you're going to document what you've done to be able to have this in your records, to share to other people that might come after you, and also to share with regulatory officials during an inspection or during some sort of quality inquiry. One of the biggest challenges in conducting a risk assessment and managing risks is in the final stage of risk monitoring and evaluation. What you're interested in knowing is, has anything changed that could affect the assessment that you've done? Also, how will you know that the controls and treatments that you have put in place are actually working or need to be changed in some way? An important concept in risk management is to know that you cannot always totally eliminate risk. There will always be some there. We call that residual risk. Our rigorous risk assessment, however, will result in risks that are identified, including those risks that are still present after you have applied the risk treatments. Quality risk management is a way to gather and use data to make better proactive decisions to protect patients. It has advantages in the manufacturer as you're distributing and handling product, but the most important thing is that quality risk management can help reduce the risks to the patients and people that are using the pharmaceutical and vaccine products that you might be handling.